This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice, and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. And everything kind of changed as soon as I realized that, um, that I need to take time for myself. Otherwise, uh, we're all going to (laughs) suffer. You know, you can't be a good caregiver. You can't be a good parent if you're struggling yourself. Caring for aging parents or other loved ones while working, raising children, and trying to live your own life? Wondering how to find the time for your personal health and happiness? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver Podcast, the show where real family caregivers share how to be happy and healthy while caring for others. Now, here's your host, family caregiver and certified caregiving consultant, Elizabeth Miller. Hello, caregiving friends. Thank you for tuning in to the Happy Healthy Caregiver Podcast on the Whole Care Network. If this is your first time listening, welcome. This is a podcast produced bi-weekly to help family caregivers integrate self-care and caregiving into their lives. Each episode has an accompanying show notes page, so if you would like more details about the topics, products, and resources we speak about, you'll find the show notes by going on to the website, happyhealthycaregiver.com. On the podcast menu, click the image for today's show. Join the Happy Healthy Caregiver email list and you will stay up to date on all of the podcast happenings and a whole lot more. We do events, giveaways, product specials, tips on how to be happy and healthy, and of course, caregiving tips. You'll want to subscribe by going to bit.ly forward slash HHC news. If you aren't a podcaster, you may not know what I'm calling the podcaster's dilemma. And that is, do we have episodes spotlighting guests or do we spotlight on our own content and have a solo episode? I have so many guests I want to spotlight. So between the podcast and Instagram live videos, I'm hoping to get to these all that are on my list. I also want to start to personalize these episodes a bit. So I'm adding two new segments to each of the episodes moving forward. The first one is what I'm currently reading. So if you didn't know, I'm an avid reader of caregiving books, fiction, and self-help books. So in this new segment, I'm going to share what I'm currently reading and listening to because I usually have two books going at once, something on audio and then a paperback. The second segment I'm calling My Favorite Things, and there's another podcast I listen to with a mother and a daughter called Soul and Wit that starts their podcast out with sharing each of their current favorite things. And I really look forward to this segment on their show. And my biggest compliment I can give them is by emulating what they are doing. Let's get into it. So for today's segment of what I'm reading, I'm actually listening to a book called Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. And I've read this one before. And if you know something about me and movies and books is that I can't usually remember all of the details, but I know that I like them or I love them. I read the paperback originally and gave this book four stars, and I'm honestly feeling like I'm reading this thriller for the first time. I don't usually reread books, but I want to participate in the discussion for my book club that's coming up. The audio is great. I'm enjoying this free through the Libby app. So if you don't know about the Libby app, you just need a library card to get to the audiobooks there. The book is a thriller. How could it not be right with the author's last name like her name is Slaughter? I would even say, though, that some parts are really horrific and super tough to read and listen to. It can be triggering. So if you don't want a triggering type of book, this one is not for you. But it is about family of sisters and missing women, crimes against women, and it's difficult to put down. And I think it's going to be an interesting discussion. 
I'll link to it in the show notes. It's Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. The paperback I'm reading is called Mad Honey by Jody Picoult and Jennifer Finley Boylan. And I'm about halfway through it, and I've just encountered this, like, huge twist. And in true Jodi Picoult style, she gets you thinking about a few different controversial topics and wondering, what would you do if you were in a similar situation? This one has romance. It has mystery. It's um, It was on Goodreads' list of best books for 2022. And you'll even learn a bit about beekeeping and how honey is made in the process. I'm hooked. And I'm having really interesting conversations with my husband, Jason, on our dog walks about it. I know he isn't going to read it, so it's fair game for me to talk about it. And it would definitely make a great future book club read. For all of this stuff, the both the book links and, and the upcoming favorites I'm going to be share with you, I'll put them on happyhealthycaregiver.com in the show notes so that if you're doing something, driving or in the middle of something, you can come back and get them when it's convenient for you. On to the favorite things. I'm going to give you two today. First one, my husband has a brand new job. He has worked in the beverage industry for decades. He accepted a job as president of sales for a new coconut water company called 100 Coconuts. Their tagline is keep it 100, which is how hip people say keep it real. They call it this 100 Coconuts because it's literally just coconut water from young coconuts that's brought in from Vietnam. There's no added sugars, no sweeteners, it's non-GMO. I have tried a few different brands of coconut water before and I have not been a fan, but of course I had to try his and I will say that it's different. It's sweet, it's refreshing, and it gives you vibes like you're on the beach. His job is expanding to getting the beverage in different locations, so where you'll find it. If you're in the Southeast, most public stores carry it and for the rest of us, it's available on Amazon in a 12 pack. If you don't love it, and you try it, I will personally send you a refund. So I'll link to how you can get it on Amazon. Second favorite thing is since I lifted the idea for this segment from them, I think I ought to mention that these are a non-caregiving related podcast that I regularly listen to. So Soul and Wit is hosted by a mother-daughter duo, and it literally reminds me of conversations I would have with my daughter, Natalie. The mom is a minimalist, and the daughter is not. Not saying I'm a minimalist, but that's kind of irrelevant. But they talk about life. They talk about health and homes and travel and reading and movies and relationships. Just talk about stuff, right? I would classify this as a podcast that helps me be a happier person, and it gives me some great ideas that I want to try. You can find out about them at soulandwit.com, but I'll link in the show notes there. So let me know what you think about these two new segments of the show. Before we get into today's Caregiver Spotlight episode with Tiffany, I want to first shine the light on our episode sponsor, My Data Diary. If you were contacted in an emergency, would you be scrambling to find or get the information you need? Happy Healthy Caregivers partner, My Data Diary, can help. Their affordable digital family information management software gives you one place for everything. This easy to use solution is your family's vault for all the essential documents you need at your fingertips or that you may need to share with others on your care team. My Data Diary Plus stores all your family's basic personal, legal, and health information for every stage of life. And the tool captures the detailed information such as lists of passwords, instructions to get into your parents' house, titles to their cars, important contact numbers, and information to help you celebrate a life. Good news, you can receive 15% off the $50 one-time price per household by visiting mydatadiary.com and using the discount code HAPPYHEALTHY. So let's meet today's guest, Tiffany Chow. In 2019, Tiffany moved home to Maui, Hawaii to become primary caregiver to her adult brother, Christian. Christian is in his 30s and has been living with autism his entire life. Inspired by her brother's interest in jewelry and wanting to help him find a job, Tiffany created Depot Market, a retail business that provides jobs to other adults with disabilities like Chris. In this episode, we chat about what made Tiffany want to move home to Maui from New York City, and how her partner created a home that's about 20 feet from their home for Chris to live independently, what it's like to be a primary caregiver with a brand new baby, and how Depot Market came to be and how you can help support what they're doing. I hope you enjoy the show. Hi, Tiffany. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast. 
Thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to have you. I've been very intrigued by sibling caregivers. And now that we have kind of owned this role of really caring for my brother, Tom. So I've, I've noticed your videos and I definitely wanted to spotlight the wonderful things that you're doing. And I know you have your hands full too, as a, as a new mom and a primary caregiver, you have a lot a business owner, a lot of things going on. We're going to dive into all of that, but first. We always kick off the show, Tiffany, um, by pulling some words of wisdom from the Happy Healthy Caregiver Jar. It's a gift I made for my sister when we transitioned the reins of care from my of my mom from me to her, and I just really felt like I wanted to make sure my sister didn't burn out. So these are some little things I have collected over the years. So your quote for this episode says, and it's by Jackie Joyner Kersey. It says, it's better to look ahead and prepare than to look back and regret. Does that, does that speak to you in any way? Uh, you know, yes, I've been, I think a lot about having regrets and, you know, because a lot of times in interview, I'm, I guess I'm talking about famous people when they say, do you have any regrets? They're like, no, I don't have any regrets. And I'm like, I have so many regrets. (laughs) But I, I kind of um, embrace that, uh, embrace that. But it's also good. I, I agree. Looking to the future rather than looking. I always, I'm always telling Chris to focus on the present, not look, because he kind of dwells on the past a lot. So, yeah, I, one of the things that kind of resonated with me with that too is someone had told me this, and so now I just kind of take these things and and then spew them out to the rest of the world. Is um, that as caregivers, we make the best decisions we can with the information that we have at the time. And, you know, sharing before the show, some of the guilt I have with my brother, Tom, and hopefully people have been checking out the Tom Tuesdays and and learning some wisdom from my brother. But he's, you know, he's been kind of put on the back burner while we've been focused on our families and caring for our aging parents. And now it's, you know, he's almost 60 60 years old. Um, And it's hard. It's hard. But we make the um, more grace for for us as sibling caregivers, because we do. We make the the best decisions with the information that we have at the time. Yeah, caregiver guilt and parental guilt is um, tough, tough, tough to navigate. <laughs> it is tough to navigate, and I don't know if this will help Chris, but this also helped me. Is like there's a reason in your car. I love all the car analogies where the the rear view mirror is smaller than the um, the front oh. window. And I love that because it's like, you need to know where you're going, right? And then it's just like, you you check a little bit to check I yourself. I like that a lot. I know, so I don't know if that will help him, but I, um, well, tell me, Tiffany, I wanna hear about your family and about how you became a primary caregiver for your brother. So uh, I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna tell, I guess I'll tell you I'm 36, gonna be 37. <laughs> My brother, Chris, is 33. And then we have a younger brother, Parker, who's 31. Um, And I had been living in New York, you know, pursuing my dreams to be a designer for in New York City for 10 years. I guess I'm going backwards. Sorry. That's okay. (laughs) Grew up in Hawaii. And then I moved to New York to pursue my dreams. And my brother, Chris, was living here on Maui part time with my dad and then part time at a residential um, program here. It was a it was a day program and a residential program. Uh, there are very limited options here on Maui and Hawaii in general. Um, so that was what he was doing for I think around five years or so. Uh, and I had always kind of known Chris is kind of he's pretty good at vocalizing what he's not happy with, and he didn't he kind of didn't always like living there. Um, and I was kind of, our parents had gone through a divorce, you know, more than 10 years ago. And our, the one of the lawyers said to me to make sure I focus on uh, my life and to not give things up. And, and so I was kind of determined to try to stick it out in New York and follow my passions. But in 2019, um i'm not even really sure what exactly happened except i had this i i kind of had pictured myself of i could have lived there forever in new york i I loved living in new york and i had this feeling in 2019 that it was time to move home and help out with chris 
and I've never ever had a feeling like that that I like knew I was in exactly the right place at the right time I've never experienced anything like that but I had this feeling in my entire body that I was supposed to that now was the right time to move home and so I moved home in 2019 to help um, take care of my brother and one of my first things like order of business was to take him out of the residential program because I knew he wasn't happy there and at the same time our mom who we kind of believe had an undiagnosed mental illness um she had was going was in between jobs and didn't have a place to live so we all ended up living together <laughs> um and my relationship with my mom had been kind of rocky since the divorce and i also hadn't lived with chris since i was in high school so we all kind of ended up living together um right before covid and my mom was diagnosed at the end of 2019 with cancer and so mm -hmm. it was kind of this light bulb moment that like this is why i was supposed to move home kind of even though <laughs> even though someone um when they do get diagnosed with cancer uh even if you have a tough relationship it's still kind of hard <laughs> Um, yes it but, i mean it's it in some some ways it can help mend a relationship but in other ways it just can kind of amplify some of the things that are that are happening there and what a what a gift in some ways like a yeah. an intuition at the, time, at the time i didn't i probably didn't see it like that but after she passed i definitely saw it like that yeah, yeah. when did she pass away your mom and then in october of 2020 yeah Wow, just same. <laughs> my mom was September 2020. So um, oh I'm sorry for your for your oh, loss. Yeah. And you went through the whole pandemic, but luckily you moved before the pandemic because that would have been really tough, I think, to get to Maui. Um, it's a beautiful place, I know. Um, I don't. Do you take it for granted? Do you take it for granted? Probably. To... <laughs> Probably do. <laughs> I, I went there years ago with my husband. I had earned a trip. I was a creative memories consultant and earned a trip to go to Maui, and we had a lovely time oh, cool. visiting there. So some good memories were made. Well, where does where does Christian um, Chris live now? He so we built it. We <laughs> my partner Aaron built him a his own little house, just like twenty. It's like twenty feet from our house from where I'm like standing. a tiny house or kind of like a tiny house but different not the traditional tiny house layout um yeah so we had spent most of 2020 trying to figure out how because I realized immediately living with my brother and my mom at the same time like this is going to be really hard like I don't know how I'm going to survive three months let alone like three years or 30 years with Chris like potentially our entire lives like this is going to be I was getting I got burnt out very quickly and was like this is we have to kind of come up with something immediately and so that was kind of our solution because um i actually i kind of had thought that chris would need a roommate i kind of thought chris wouldn't be able to live by himself but it turns out he's thriving i mean we're next door but um he doesn't have to have someone living with him directly so um yeah. it just seems kind of like some eyes yeah. you know making sure he's not getting into yeah, not, not completely get... isolated. Well, how how has it been going? It's been it's I can't even tell you it's the biggest game changer <laughs> ever. Um, it's been huge. It, yeah, it's been going really well. Yeah. Well, I've heard of these, you know, granny pods we hear about or things in the yard, you know, mother in law suites and things. But to have a sibling um, thing and you must have some space for that, which is which worked out well. And I've seen that Chris is kind of quite of a cook, too. His favorite thing in the entire world is food. He he will eat anything remotely edible, which can be a problem. <laughs> but yeah, his, he loves food and he loves to cook. And I, I'll link to some of his recipes that y'all have had on your on your blog for his microwave chocolate chip cookie oh, yeah. and his <laughs> crock pot curry looks really good. <laughs> They're both very good. Yes, but he's um, he's very endearing, and uh, I think that people will you know fall in love with him and he's just um it's it's fun to see y'all's interacting well then tell me how um depot market came to be like that was that then so you've got him kind of situated you have your own space back mom's mom's sadly passed away and you're you're grieving through all of that and this is pre-baby of course because that's only five months <laughs> new um so that what happened next how did depot market come to be 
So when I took over taking care of Chris and managing his schedule, um, the program he was at, uh, which I I was kind of an I was an employee of, and Chris was my, they called I was called a mentor, you know, and Chris was a participant, so I was Chris's mentor. And you know, the first day there is like circle time, and then they have a, a couple activities in the morning, but then the whole rest of the day is empty. And I was like, so what are you supposed to do? now and they're like oh you just do whatever and I was like there wasn't really a structure and I'm not trying to um throw any shame or shade uh this organization because they're wonderful but it's I was like okay what are we going to do every day you know um because how much time did the did that take that planned like, activity like, like an hour <laughs> yeah two hours, and, you know and, and then there's an entire rest of the day and I was like this is going to be tough because what we tried out different things we were volunteering at an animal shelter cleaning like 30 cat litter boxes which i was like i don't know how long we can do this and then um paying for activities for chris to do like music lessons art art classes but we were all we were having to like pay for everything so it was because there aren't there weren't a lot of opportunities for chris to do especially having a job like the jobs he wanted weren't available to him so um that's kind of where the idea because Chris and I both um, have a, have experience in jewelry and so a lot of the hotels around here they will invite local artists to sell their work and so that's kind of how that happened and in the beginning Chris was getting all of the money um, but then we got flagged uh, by social security and he was going to lose some of his disability benefits mm. if we didn't um, I was going to ask you about that but, if he was yeah. that my brother's also on SSDI so I know that there's a cap on what you can make right and I stupidly didn't realize that. Well, how would you know? Like you've yeah. inherited this whole, yeah. whole new world of responsibilities. So mm -hmm. no regrets there, Tiffany. You're doing... And it worked out. It worked out for the better. And that's the whole our depot market. That's where it came from. Um, turning kind of what is it? Turning lemons to lemonade. So now we can help <laughs> more adults like Chris. Yeah. So you so have em employees essentially. How many people yeah. are working for depot market well, right so, now? Uh, before baby, before baby, we were just doing our jewelry pop ups at the hotel and it was Chris and two other um, two adults with Down syndrome and we're almost done with our brick and mortar store and so once that opens, we have um, Chris. Uh, four more four more four more four more adults wow. like Chris that'll be coming on board so I'm really excited to open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah is where is your if someone's visiting Maui where do they well where they in find Wailuku, your brick and mortar the little Wailuku town yep it's up and coming oh I love that I I kind of vaguely remember people coming to the hotels when I was there and having yeah. their I think their, most of them have that yeah it's a really nice thing that they do to showcase the local um artists and things so what are what are some of your favorite products that depot market has so Chris is, or I guess our signature, because it started, we started off selling at, um, our pop-ups, Chris's origami jewelry. That's, I guess, our signature piece. And Chris makes them entirely on his own. He folds the paper, cuts the paper, and then does all the wire, um, the wire wrapping work. So that's kind of our signature piece. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. And you, you ship online as well? Ship online, yep. So perfect. I'm going to have to get myself a, a, something that's made made by you all. That's that's wonderful. Uh, and look forward to to the stuff that you have that's growing there, the brick and mortar. I'm sure you've got your hands full, Tiffany, with it. Yeah. New baby and all of that. How is the baby added to your? We thought we were going to open the store in September. <laughs> <laughs> And it's now February because I like I think I severely underestimated how much work a baby is. <laughs> That's an yeah. understatement. I com I completely underestimated. I was like, oh, Christmas, now on January, and we're like February. Now we're in February. So <laughs> yeah, it's a good and thing they're so cute, right? Because yeah, but it's because my partner Aaron, who built Chris's house, is building the store all by himself. So that's mm -hmm. and um, so trading off, uh, you know, some who is watching the baby, who's in. So that's kind of why it's been taking a little time. Yeah. 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 Well, I imagine at some point you'll be able to take what's her name, by the way. Oh, Luna. Luna. You'll be able to take Luna to work and she'll she'll get rolling to have the, to take her to work. Yeah. Get into the family <laughs> business. I know. Yeah. It's so 
you know, you, you're getting used to a lot of monkey wrenches in your life and kind of like rolling with it and being resilient. And yeah, when we, what is it? When we make plans, God laughs and, and puts other I've, things in our way. So I've learned that over the years to just not make firm pl- or like be okay with if plans change. You know, It's so true. I mean, and I know that was a big lesson for me during caregiving is just kind of letting go and going when, as soon as I could kind of, which was not my nature. I'm a bit of a control I, freak. Oh, so am I a hundred percent. But it, it's hard. But the, when I did kind of ease up and just kind of release the expectations around some things that, you know, were easy, to, easier to let go of. Um, nobody was getting, you know, injured or anything like that. That could be ha- ha- helpful. Well, you know, one of your caregiving tips when I had asked you is that, you know, Chris has, have we said this? And Chris has autism. Chris has autism. Yeah. yeah. And he, he's been, you know, diagnosed with, since he was young. Um, and that you said that caregiving for someone with autism is much more than a physical thing. So maybe explain that a little bit. Because I think when people think caregiving, they are thinking about, you know, transportation and feeding and toileting and maybe some of those things. But when you're dealing with something like autism, it's a completely different world. So what are some of the things that you um, if, you know, to educate people who are listening about the things that you're doing to help? Chris in his life? I guess one of the things I struggle with with Chris it is when we argue, because we first and foremost, I consider him my brother first, and then I'm his caregiver. But because of that, um, and now I'm in this, you know, parental mother, he calls me mom sometimes, it drives me nuts. <laughs> but <laughs> one of the things I struggle with when we argue, because we've been advised by, you know, specialists to de-escalate the situa- situation immediately. Um, but I'm, I think because I'm his sister and because maybe I'm slightly argumentative and want to win arguments, I am terrible at de-escalating situations and I want to talk it out with him and find out what it is that's what we're arguing about, but it tends to escalate him. Mm. Um, and so that has been a real challenge for me to let things go, like just let it go. I think I'm completely off topic from what you asked. No, I mean, I mean, we've had this conversation recently with somebody where it's like almost like you need a code word, right? Like, if like, okay, let's just, um, I used to have one with a guy at work. It was avocado, I want to say. <laughs> it was like when we would just kind of get at it, like a married couple, even though he wasn't my husband, but spent a lot of time at work with him. And then we would just say avocado and have to kind of like walk away and regroup. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but it's, you know, we're, it's, you're dealing, you're neurotypical and you're dealing with somebody who's neurodivergent and it, it can be tough, right? Cause it's like reasoning with them. Very um, emotional and mentally like exhausting at times. Mm. Um, from what you that's kind of why I brought that up saying separate from it, it can be physical when he gets really um agitated but it's kind of like a mental exercise to first acknowledge like okay I'm escalating the situation and also um I I don't because I know he also wants to talk it out so there's there's mm-hmm. this um sometimes I'm not sure what's the best way to handle a situation like that um I'm not sure I don't think that's probably it's like for anybody. Yeah, a lot of trial and error, I think, happens when we, we go into caregiving. And you had shared something with me that he can be, Chris can be sometimes insecure, and then particularly about being Asian. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're having to also kind of help him with, you know, with those kinds of things. What are some of the things you tell him in those situations? I am always telling him that being Asian is awesome. Like, I just saw a TikTok of... Um an Asian cast of a movie and one of the girls was saying I love being Asian Asian men are sexy and I showed Chris this video I said see Chris Asian men are sexy it's cool to be Asian and it's um I don't know if it's entirely sunk in yet but that's definitely one of his being having a you know disability is a and being Asian is are huge insecurities of his but I'm always telling him being Asian um being autistic is awesome um and he He'll he'll say that he's not he doesn't have autism. He'll just he'll if if he admits it, he'll say he has a little autism. And I say, yeah, you have a little autism and that's okay. And that's and that's an awesome thing about you. It's not bad. Like people with autism are awesome and people that are Asian are awesome. Um, 
And I tell them, you know, I'm Asian too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah. um, I know there's so much like stuff that's happening that, you know, they're just on a, on a regular basis, even like I had dinner with my brother last night and talking and it's like the woman who waited on us, you know, single mom, she had a, a brain you know, injury and it's just like talking to him about like a lot of people are have different things that they're working on and their own insecurities like yeah none of us none of us are perfect and we're trying to figure it out well you're getting some great uh practice i think <laughs> tiffany for when you're when luna gets bigger and you're 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 gonna have some a lot more wisdom than a lot of new moms because I'm you've really gone excited through that she's growing up with chris because um a lot of the not so nice interactions that we have with Chris are usually from kids. And so um, it makes me really, really happy whenever she's with Chris and like he makes her laugh um, because she'll have grown up with someone that's different and, you know, we'll have that her entire life. So hopefully she'll have, um, you know, be more compassionate and, you know, yeah. There are some benefits for sure of, be, of having that caregiving rate in your life and having somebody that's got different abilities in your life. And that saddens me though, that, that kids are, are tough on, on Chris, but I see it. I mean, I see it even with adults, like, you know, my brother wears different hats to kind of draw attention to himself. And, you know, I think he, partly he doesn't want to blend in. He's socially like isolated in a lot of ways. And so he wants attention. Um, and this is a way that, yeah, the way that he gets that. Too bad we don't live closer. We could definitely no. <laughs> get, and I would love to get Tom busy with doing something. He just spends a lot of time on Facebook, like searching for that connection that is so superficial. In fact, we had, that was another thing we talked about last night. He said, Jennifer Aniston is following me, his fan club, you know, and so he's a, a target of a lot of people trying to um get gift cards and money out of them and so we've had to kind of edge yeah be i don't know if you've prepared yourself for that but that is something that they're susceptible to um particularly so, but my sister monitors his chats and stuff and i said well you know doesn't that seem awkward to you that jennifer aniston is like asking you for money like she's probably doing okay i would think so um, but to for it insults him in a way that it's like, oh, she's wouldn't be interested in me. Um, if, I, I don't know. It's it is a hard conversation. We're always kind of yeah. trying to figure those out. Why is it important to you, Tiffany, that Chris is independent and that his life has purpose? Um, well, since we since he started working and living on his own and he does a lot of tasks on his own, which I think before um our parents and me included underestimated his abilities um and so and it partially came you know giving him all this independence and encouraging it partially came out of a i'll admit selfish reason for myself because it was i was having a really hard time um when we were living under the same roof and a lot of things were being done for him and i was like he is very capable of doing all this stuff and we'll see how it goes him living on his own but his confidence and self-esteem has gone like through the roof. Um, and he, his cash phrase for when I'm like trying to be controlling and doing something, you know, he'll be like, I got this, I can do it. You know, he's like, I got this. Um, and Aww. it's, uh, he's, he feels like he's capable of doing anything, which is, um, really, a really important, um, feeling to have. Yeah. Nice. What's he like with Luna? He's always like, I can do, well, <laughs> he's like, I can do this. Let me, you know, um, but uh, he's, he's absolutely terrific. He wants to help out in every single way. Um, and he is extremely, extremely helpful. Um, when just on Monday, his skills trainer had to, can't, had to call out last minute and I needed to run a bunch of errands and she hates the car seat. So, you know, he sits with her in the back seat and keeps her company and like was helping me push the car while I held the baby in target and, He's, he's so helpful. Like it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What, how, are, so how are you able to carve out time for yourself, Tiffany? You'd said you're burned out. You've kind of, you've put some systems in place of like finding a place where, where Chris can live remotely, getting him. So he's got stimulation throughout the day, but now you have a baby and that's a whole other layer to things. Like, what are you doing so that you stay energized and refreshed? Like now I have a baby. It's a little different. It but, is different. I know. But pre 
pre-baby, and I think we touched on it, um, caregiver guilt. I had, when I first was taking care of Chris, I felt really guilty all the time if I wanted to go do something by myself or with my partner for a few hours and not bring Chris. I would always feel really guilty. Um, but then we were kind of um, all struggling because of that, because then I would be in a bad mood. Um, and so we kind of <laughs> just said, you know, it's okay if we don't bring Chris to go do this and we do it on his own or we do it on our own. Um, and you know, Chris didn't suffer for it. And so it was just, and everything kind of changed as soon as I realized that, um, that I need to take time for myself. Otherwise, uh, we're all gonna suffer. <laughs> you know, you can't be a good caregiver. You can't be a good parent if you're struggling yourself. Um, I'm trying to figure that out now as being a parent. <laughs> yeah. And you have a future person that's going to be like all eyes on you yeah. and really emulating, you know, what mom does, you know, as far as so, um, modeling that for her, I think is important as a, as a future person who's going to grow up and, um, probably be married and working and maybe having children of her own or things like that. So, um, well, you'll figure it out. It does take some time for sure to kind of, and then, and I think too, like it's trying on different things and figuring out um, that it doesn't, like we love the weekends away and the nights out on the town, but that how we can kind of get that little refreshment in our day without it being a big, a big mm -hmm. event um, is important. Well, on that topic, let me ask you a couple questions from the just for you daily self care journal. There's no wrong answers here, Tiffany. We're just having a little fun with some prompts from my journal. So, um, okay, if you had to star a celebrity in your life or celebrity to play you in their in your life of, you know, moving to Maui and doing all that, do you have somebody in mind who you would like to play you? Um, I guess Lucy Lou or Aquafina, very different people, but <laughs> yeah, well, those are good choices for sure. Um, what's your go to for a like quick and healthy lunch? Uh, I'm vegetarian and I, um, I've been eating this rice green bowl with, with a bunch of veggies with, uh, brown rice and, uh, Pokey tofu. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. That sounds really good. Um, let's see. What's the last charity that you donated time or money to? I don't, might have been a minute, but maybe it was the one you were talking about. I think it was actually uh, Coral Reef Alliance I've been donating to for, I think, over a decade. Um, they help uh, coral reefs. We live in an island, obviously, so the ocean... Um, is really important to me um that and yeah i'll just make it stop there <laughs> it's beautiful i love that and what um what are you hoping that like people get from this like what is there anything else that you want to add some parting words of wisdom you're like oh my gosh elizabeth like if i have one message about caregiving or self-care or caring for people who are um neurodivergent is there something that you that's on your mind there to absolutely make time for yourself like even if you think you can't do it you have to you have to just you just have to do it commit to yourself to do that and um something that comes up a lot is not underestimating people you know i'm even me like i sometimes underestimate chris and he'll always prove me wrong so just not underestimating people no matter their circumstance you know let's get and give them a chance to like try and different things yes, absolutely. out like absolutely give them a chance yeah that's wonderful. Well, I hope people check out Depot Market and how else can people, so it's depotmarket.org. So it is a non, mm -hmm. non-profit. Well, it's not a non-profit, but they didn't, uh, someone already had depotmarket.com. Oh, but gotcha. <laughs> we were going to be a non-profit and then it got a little complicated. It was a little too much, too much paperwork. I, well, that, it's funny, like that's right. Happy Healthy Caregiver is not a non-profit. I'm like, that is a lot of work. Um, but there are a lot of pro bono things that we do to kind of keep, exactly. keep that going. Exactly. That's kind of why I felt, felt it was it was okay if we used the .org. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's at depotmarket.org. It's D-E-P-O-M-A-R-K-E-T dot org. And then where else can people find out about you? We're very active on TikTok. That's how we found That's how, you. Mm -hmm. That's how we found each other. And then uh, Instagram too. Got it. Well, we'll put the links to both of those in the show notes. 
Thank you so much, Tiffany. I wish you all the success. I look forward to maybe seeing some glimpses of Luna um, <laughs> on some, some future recordings because uh, love, love me some cute little babies. So thank you thank so much. I love talking to you. I got some great tips. Bingo. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were talking before the show about how my brother loves oh. bingo. Yes. It's something that he's super passionate about. <laughs> so check it. Vlad of VFWs, I think is what I told you to, to do that. So Cool. Writing that down. Yes. Thank you, Tiffany. Enjoy your day. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast on the Whole Care Network. As always, show notes that accompany today's episode can be found on my website, happyhealthycaregiver.com. Just look under the podcast menu for today's episode image, and that will take you to the page with the links and information we spoke about today. You'll also find other resources on the website along with links to purchase the Just For You Daily Self-Care Journal. When you purchase from my website, you'll get a signed copy and for a limited time, free shipping. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider subscribing to the show on your podcast platform. It really helps other family caregivers find the podcast and you'll automatically receive our bi-weekly shows in your podcast listening queue. Maybe while you're subscribing, consider leaving a five-star rating and review or just simply talk it up on your social channels. Let's stay connected. I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Happy Healthy Caregiver. And until we meet again, please take care of you. This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time.